Today we are checking out the day the earth stood still for the very first time. So this movie was highly requested after we finished watching The Forbidden Planet. If you guys haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. It's on the channel and it was a real blast of a movie. So I'm going super blind into this one more than ever before. The only things going into this I know, the movie was filmed in the 50s and that there's some kind of chrome looking alien thing that comes out of spacecraft. You guys told me this is good. I believe you guys. So let's check this out and get into it. The day the earth stood still. You can tell it's an old film because they have the credits as well before the movie starts. I wonder when they decided to put it after the movie. Holy oh, Mac. Call headquarters. Get the lieutenant. Holy Christmas, that thing's doing about 4,000. But that's incredible, sir. That's <laughs> Holy Christmas. <laughs> I have a bogey at 200,000 feet. 4,000 miles an hour. Government has not yet issued any statement, but there seems to be no question that there actually is a large unidentified object circling the Earth at incredible speed. It is actually intriguing. Could you imagine if that happened nowadays? What would the news coverage be like and how would they approach that situation? Whatever it is, it's something real. A large object traveling at supersonic speed is headed over the North Atlantic toward the east coast of the United States. This is H.V. Carlton Barnes. <laughs> I also love, it's always in the United States. I swear they never led anywhere else. No, there are signs of normalcy. The beautiful spring weather, the tourist crowds, around the public monuments and other buildings. Yeah, don't worry, we could be dying, but go down to the beach. Enjoy yourself, enjoy this lovely weather. Must have been cool to be that one extra that got to point and be like, oh, ship, but like you, you're entrusted to point. I wonder also, would that have scared aliens coming down to Earth if they see loads of people just scrambling around everywhere? Would they assume that as a sign of being threatened or something like that? There is something about 50s, 60s style America. <laughs> that guy's badass. <laughs> Oh, they all go for it. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. The arrival of a space ship in Washington. Love the mustache and hat, by the way. Sophisticated style. To present the news as well. <laughs> Landed in Washington today at 3.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The ship is now resting exactly where it landed two hours ago. And so far, there is no sign of life from inside it. They're supported by tanks, artillery, and machine guns. Behind the police lines, there's a huge crowd of curiosity. Oh gosh, that crowd is a little bit too close for my liking. You'd think they'd be a bit further back. Every eye, every weapon is trained on the ship. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. Who's going to be the one to make contact? have come to visit you in peace. Gosh, I thought he was doing something else with that arm then. A few years too late. I want to have your guns pointing now. What if someone accidentally shoots him? Or her? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you don't mess with my friend. <laughs> I'll come for you. I'll mess with you. Gosh, everyone evacuated so quickly it sped up. I do you wonder how they did those effect shots? Oh, they just reversed it properly, yeah. Good, get rid of their weapons, they were stupid. You can also kill the guy that shot him as well, I'd be happy for you too. Peaceful race? God, 
Roscoe. It was a gift for your president. With this, he could have studied life on the other planets. That was a dumb thing to shoot. Get that ambulance over here. Take him to Auto Reed Hospital right away. Yes, sir. It was me thinking the door would slide open like we were in the future. I've been told you speak our language. And that your name is Mr. Fatu. Just Klaatu. Have you been travelling long? About five months. Just a man! A regular man! A handsome man, that be it, but a man. From another planet. Let's just say that we're neighbours. I mean the reason for my coming here. We're very curious about that too. This is not a personal matter, Mr Harley. It concerns all the people on your planet. I want to meet with representatives from all the nations of the Earth. And there are practical considerations. The time involved, the uh, the enormous distances. I travel 250 million miles. I was about to say, like, this dude's come from outer space. He's an alien. Of course you can make time. We've been monitoring your radio broadcast for a good many years. That's how we learned your languages. My mission here is not to solve your petty squabbles. It concerns the existence of every last creature on Earth. To all the nations at the same time. That is my demand. Then I suggest a meeting of all the chiefs of state. Believe me, you don't understand. See, there's no Zoom calls back in the day, so that caused the big problem. Well, I merely tell you that the future of your planet is at stake. Were there any conflicts going on around this time as well that m the leaders meeting up could cause a massive problem? But I must tell you in all honesty. I'm extremely dubious about the results. I've been dealing in Earth's politics a good deal longer than you have. <laughs> Metallurgical experts have found his huge body impregnable. They're now concentrating on the ship itself. So Talking about the big robot. <laughs> I thought they were talking about the guy. It was like his huge body. It was like... Where are we going with that? No luck, sir. We've tried everything from a blowtorch to a diamond drill. The dude's just letting them mine at this ship. For hardness and strength, it's out of this world. I can tell you officially that's where it came from. <laughs> How old do you think he is? Oh, I'd say 35, 38. Told me this morning while I was examining him. He's 78. We need to go to this planet. He was very nice about it, but he made me feel like a third class witch doctor. Made you look like a dumbass too? From that man's arm yeah. yesterday. Said he put some salve on it, some stuff he had with him. And I don't know whether to just get drunk or give up the practice of medicine. <laughs> oh, these poor doctors. The president accepted your suggestion and cabled the invitations for a meeting. Let me read you some of the replies. Oh, no. <laughs> so, no, fuck you, go away. That it'll be impossible for him to attend the meeting suggested by the president unless the meeting is held in Moscow. Representation could be sent only if the meeting were held in Washington. And then the UK is like, well, we are on it in the UK. Perhaps you'd like to discuss it with the president. I will not speak with any one nation or group of nations. Your impatience is quite understandable. I'm impatient with stupidity. I am very sorry. So I'm guessing I wish it were otherwise. from his world, everything is like, there's no stupid squabbling. Every nation is just together and they work together. That's why medicine's so good good and their life expectancy is better and their aging etc because that's what coming together does i'm only assuming oh i must ask that you don't attempt to leave the hospital our military people have insisted on this i'm sure you understand <laughs> he's like oh that's not gonna keep me in he's not gonna be in there Got away. What? Get every available man. What? Great line delivery. I do wish sometimes that I could just be one of these extras in the movie that just says one line. I'll just give it everything. There's no denying that there is a monster at large. That we are dealing with forces beyond our knowledge and power. Already scaremongering them. The president has urged all citizens to be on the alert for any information about this man. That though this man may be our bitter enemy, he could be also a newfound friend. Exactly. I'll just assume he's going to be a bad guy. Hey, and do not show the man's face. 
president said the entire Okay, oh, maybe I assume he's a bad guy. <laughs> this is no ordinary manhunt. He warned, we may be up against powers that are beyond our control. My name is Carpenter. I'm looking for a room. Oh, I see. Are you an FBI man? I bet he is, Mom. I bet he's looking for the spaceman. I think we've all been hearing too much about spacemen. Benson looks mighty fine, may I say? Can I help you look for the spaceman? I know just what he looks like. He's got a big square head with three great big eyes. That's, he's really a dear little boy and quiet as a mouse. Yeah, I doubt that very much. This creature, where is he? What is he up to? Fly to Earth? And a robot that can destroy our tanks and guns. What other terrors can he unleash at will? Yes, I'll have a sip as well, jeez. Monster must be must be destroyed. But where would such a creature hide? We do destroy it. What do we face in retaliation? Why doesn't the government do something? That's what I'd like to know. What can they do? They're only people, just like us. People, my foot. They're Democrats. Oh no. <laughs> Again, it's a political debate. It wasn't a very good thing though. Like, well, what, what, what can they do? They're just normal people like me and you. Well, they do have more power to do things i was just wondering what i would do well, perhaps before deciding on a course of action you'd want to know more about the people here well if you want my opinion he comes from right here on earth and you know where i mean i actually don't that that went straight over my head <laughs> oh, mrs benson mr stevens is here to see you oh thank you good morning good morning no 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 i'd be happy to spend the day with him if you'd let me. Say, that would be great. Wouldn't it? Oh my god, please make a bond with the kid and then they get together at the oh, end. Bobby and I had a fine time yesterday afternoon. We talked and listened to the radio. I thought today you might like to show me around the city. Look at the way she stares at him. Find a woman that does that. That's my father. He was killed at Anzio. Probably one of the best ways for him to learn. We learn a lot about humanity through that. Well, I'll tell you, Bobby. I've been away a long time. Very far away. They have cemeteries, but not like this one. You see, they don't have any wars. Gee, that's a good idea. Go to the movies. All right. No fooling, will you? No fooling. I feel that was so slag for back in the time. Yeah, no fooling. Do you think they'd accept these? Gee, they look like diamonds. Well, in some places, those are what people use for money. Would you give me your two dollars for two of these? Well... Sure. Get to just become a millionaire. <laughs> That's the kind of man I'd like to talk to. Bobby, who's the greatest man in America today? Professor Barnhart, I guess. He's the greatest scientist in the whole world. He lives right. What about Oppenheimer? Mr. Carpenter, now can we go see the spaceship? If you like. I bet that iron guy's strong. I bet he can knock down a whole building. I shouldn't be at all surprised. A highly developed form of atomic power, I should imagine. I thought that was only for bombs. No. It's interesting that, like, that's the first thing that comes to his mind. It's like, ah, oh, it's used for bombs, war, destruction. Where he comes from a different planet of a different type of thinking. You see, the basic problem is to overcome the inertia. And... That guy looks like Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Biggest spaceship I ever saw. <laughs> and you, sir. I am fearful when I see people substituting fear for reason. In fact, uh, I would like. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Another gentleman over here in the crowd. Would extra, you say extra space. Just cuts him off. Not the answer he was looking for. Inertia is the property of matter by which it remains in uniform motion unless acted upon by external force. I bet that's just the way Professor Barnhart talks. Let's go and see Professor Barnhart and find out how he talks. Uh, I bet you'd be scared. Maybe we can scare him more than he can scare us. <laughs> a real screwball. Screwball. Uh. <laughs> Gee, I bet you this is where he works. What's that stuff on the black? Oh, he knows he, what it is. Probably couldn't get to see him even if he was home. Hey, where you going? If he's that difficult to see, perhaps we ought to leave a calling card. He's gonna leave the answer to his equation. Did he do it wrong? He just needs a little help. What are you doing in here? Do you realize the professor's been working on that problem for weeks? He'll solve it in no time now. 
I think you'd better leave now. Would you give this to the professor? I think he'll want to talk to me. I wouldn't erase that. The professor needs it very badly. I'm glad he butted in then because I got so scared that she was going to erase it. A man is written on my blackboard? How dare he? Carpenter, come home yet? Yeah, he's right inside. Tell him I'd like to see him. Okay, come on in. Oh, I suppose Professor Barnhart's been looking for me. I've been looking for you all afternoon. It was a wonderful day. You still haven't answered my question. The boss is leaving for Chicago tomorrow. If I could tell him that I was getting married and had two dependents. But I've got to think about it. A good insurance salesman wouldn't give you time to think about it. He's not the right man for her. Mr. Benson, this is Mr. Brady. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Brady's a government agent. Oh, no, she's like, oh, no. He was right all along. We went to the movies and had some ice cream cones, and then we went to see Daddy. I don't know how to thank you. I enjoyed every minute of it. You didn't finish your story. I'll finish it tomorrow. Good night, Bobby. Mom? Good night. Look at the... Look at her eyes. We sure had fun today. We saw the spaceship, and we went to see Professor Barnhart. Professor Barnhart? Yeah, sure. I was hoping I could go out with Mr. Carpenter again. If the boy doesn't have the same feeling with the other guy, the salesman. And that means a lot to the mother, maybe. This is the man you wanted to see, Professor. Thank you, Captain. I'll wait outside. Thought you'd have the solution by this time. Not yet. That's why I wanted to see you. Variation of parameters, this is the answer. How can you be so sure? I find it works well enough to get me from one planet to another. <laughs> now, if you are not interested, or if you intend to turn me over to your army, we needn't waste any more time. You may go now, Captain. Please thank General Cutler. You have faith, Professor Barnhart. It isn't faith that makes good science, Mr. Clatko. It's curiosity. Very Star Trek, that. Curiosity. We know from scientific observation that your planet has discovered a rudimentary kind of atomic energy. But soon, one of your nations will apply atomic energy to spaceships. That will create a threat to the peace and security of other planets. Oh, they're going to spread their violence across the universe. What I have to say must be said to all concerned. It is too important to be entrusted to any individual. I come to you as a last resort, and I confess my patience is wearing thin. What sort of action do you mean? Violent action, since that seems to be... <laughs> that gets everyone's attention, yeah. yeah. In New York City, perhaps, or sinking the Rock of Gibraltar. It'll be maybe not that. Violent? Jeez. Would you be willing to meet with the group of scientists I'm calling together? We must get leaders from every field. The finest minds in the world. I leave that in your hands. I'm afraid there is no alternative. In such a case, the planet Earth would have to be eliminated. Oh, so they're maybe attempting to make peace and show them the ways. But if they can't, then they have to eliminate the planet because they will cause trouble throughout the galaxy universe such a demonstration be possible before the meeting yes of course why don't you leave it to me i'll think of something something dramatic but not this yes i'll do a little demonstration all of america's gone oh we said a little white right? well personally i wouldn't go out after dark these days but uh, then i'm not courting am i one way to talk to someone like that <laughs> so maybe you should stay in with mr carpenter sure i'm all of Earth's experiences. But why did that man come here last night? Oh, they just wanted to ask me a few questions. Apparently they thought I was looking for secrets of some kind. Excuse me. Mystery, it makes it more attractive. Good night, Mr. Carpenter. Have a good time, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I guess I'm just tired of hearing about Mr. Carpenter. Tom. I don't like the way he's attached himself to you and Bobby. <laughs> Drama. All you have to remember is first find the common denominator, and then divide. Thanks, Mr. Carp. Come on, he's so perfect. He's right in front of you. I think it would be better if we didn't see quite so much of Mr. Carp. Oh, she's worried. He, she might, he might be a Russian spy or some sort. You think he's a bank robber? Or a, or a gangster, maybe? No, dear, of course not. Why would he want to be left alone? Don't forget to brush your teeth. <laughs> Oh, so cool. Always love when you see those videos of those guys with the whole basement of the train models and the mountains and everything. You a flashlight? Yeah. He's not going to make him the greatest train model of all time. What do you need it for? I, um, the lights in my room went out.
He's going back to the ship, isn't he? He's going to sneak into the ship and the kid's going to follow along. Also, the score of this movie is very underrated. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. One thing I gotta do after this film is definitely watch the behind the scenes because I really want to know some of these effects. I want to, I may want to know how does this guy move in this suit? <laughs> what did it do to them? God, Moringa. Mr. Carpenter is so badass. Just listen to the score. Imre Klatu, Narawak. Oh, he's going to communicate back to his home. Well, after you left, I followed Mr. Carpenter. And where do you think he went? Right into the spaceship. <laughs> now, Bobby, wait a minute. Bobby, you've been dreaming again. No, I haven't, Mom. Honest, I, I promise you, I saw him. Where were the soldiers all this time? Well, that big iron guy grabbed him and knocked him out. I really see a spaceship, but you thought you did. What if Mr. Carpenter's just sleeping at this time of night? He's going to think he's a bank robber. He's not there, but look what I found in his room. Well, Mr. Carpenter's got lots of diamonds. He gave me a couple of them. He gave these to you? No, not exactly. For two bucks. Two dollars. I think the guy's a crook. I never did trust him. Gee, Mom, you think maybe he's a diamond smuggler? Bobby oh, and I've had enough excitement for tonight. Do you think it's all right? What excitement did she have? Bobby, your shoes are soaking. Yeah, grass was kind of wet. So it was real. Hello. May I see you for a minute? I'm at Bleecker's to get an appraisal on that diamond. I thought we might have lunch together. Can I talk to you later? I'm having lunch with Mr. Carpenter instead. How about that? I'd like to know what he told you last night. I really didn't pay much attention. There's another elevator we can use. A private one? Before I ask you to be honest with me, perhaps I should be completely honest with you. We shall be here for a little while. About 30 minutes. His demonstration. He turned all the power off? The buttons. They won't work. Got a little bit of a load time. The electricity has been neutralized all over the world. People having to walk. Oh no! How painful. Can you, could you imagine if they did that these days? Everyone with their phones, all devices. The what do I do? Read read a book. Oh no, <laughs> I wonder what the worst situations would be to get caught in. People are running around like ants. What a brilliant idea. I never would have thought of it. <laughs> I love that. Tell me, Hilda, does all this frighten you? Yes, sir, it certainly does. That's good, Hilda. <laughs> Just gonna see where everyone's mindset is at. I can't tell you, the president is prepared to declare a state of national emergency. Phone doesn't work either. We'll call the phone company. But the phone doesn't work. <laughs> the phone doesn't work. We'll phone the phone company. That's how it works. There are no diamonds like this any place in the world that I know of. I give you a very good price. Thank you, no. What would I... I would just ask, what, what would that price be? Well, more than I told Professor Barnhart because... I love the lighting in this. You have great hope for this meeting. I can see no other hope for your planet. <laughs> Must be 12.30. Wait a minute, there's someone else. Who? Tom, he was there last night when Bobby told me... Oh no, he's gonna call the coppers. Well, we can't take any chance. I'll get in touch with him right away to make sure. When it was discovered last night that the robot had moved, we accomplished that this morning by encasing him in a block of KL-93. No, sir, we just checked on that. He's locked up tight as a drum. We'll get him. Alive if possible. But we must get him. <laughs> That was kind of a bad photo of him with his hand raised like that, especially during this time. Call the Pentagon. 
Find out who's in charge of this spaceman business. Whoever it is, I want to talk to him. The Pentagon. Can you just call it the Pentagon like that? What about him? Helen, he's the man from the spaceship. I had that diamond checked at three different places. I know, it's true. You... That's what I'm trying to tell you. We mustn't do anything about it. He's a menace to the whole world. It's our duty to turn but him in. But he isn't a menace. He's a menace! J. Jonah Jameson come out of him. I could write my own ticket. I'd be the biggest man in the country. Is that what you're thinking about? It isn't just you and Mr. Carpenter. The rest of the world is involved. I don't care about the rest of the world. Man's selfishness is his downfall. I feel different right now. You wait and see. You're going to marry a big hero. I'm not going to marry anybody. That's what they call me in bed. Big hero. Deploy all Zone 5 units according to Plan B. Immediately. Maintain station and remain on radio. I like I'm moving the steering wheel so much for just driving straight. Oh! <laughs> truck moves. Phew. Extremely good timing. I'm sure Barnhart can arrange to hide me until the meeting. Where's the meeting going to be? At the ship. Yeah! They got in a taxi cab and went off down that street! Why? Why, kid? Yellow cab moving north on 14th Street from Harvard Street. License number of target vehicle is H0012. Something big's going on. And they're all after us! <laughs> worried about Gort. I'm afraid of what he might do. If anything should happen to me. Go on a rampage, just like in that um, newspaper. If anything should happen to me, you must go to Gort. You must say these words. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Barada, Nikto. You must remember those words. Could you write them down for me? All vehicles, close in. Hey, what's going on here? Hey, you didn't pay your fare. It was extreme. See if they have a stranger in the police station. Take him there. <laughs> Once again, do this not mess with my friend. You will be messed with. <laughs> I thought he was aiming at the guns. He's going full destruction mode. Oh no, he, she better blurt it out quick before she gets zapped. Say it! Say it! Nick Toe, Nick Toe. Or is it just friends? Friends. You can kind of see the wires on that. Just wish they that one shot they filmed from a slight different angle so you just couldn't see the wires. Maybe just a little bit further away. Body? Captain, don't let anyone in or out of the building. Yes, sir. I pray to God he's not dead. Is he going to break him out and take him back to the ship where maybe he can bring him back to life? believe they just shot him like that that was like such an extreme thing to do he wasn't resist he was running but he wasn't resisting what does that does that count as resisting what if he comes back out for this meeting resurrected that would shock everyone the robots on the loose now and it's not safe around here you'll have to get your people out of this area <laughs> 
that loud for me? Thank God. I thought you were. I was. He has the power of life and death. This technique, in some cases, can restore life for a limited period. You mean how long will I live? Gosh damn it. Bloody humans. Under the circumstances, the army people have asked us to leave so that we comply. The ship's opening. Don't walk away. <laughs> The universe grows smaller every day. And the threat of aggression by any group, anywhere, can no longer be tolerated. Now, this does not mean giving up any freedom, except the freedom to act irresponsibly. For the mutual protection of all planets, and for the complete elimination of aggression. For our policemen, we created a race of robots to patrol the planets in spaceships like this one, and preserve the peace. In matters of aggression... And destroying... If they have to. Absolute. This power cannot be revoked. Even if their race gets violent, it will stop them. It's too terrible to risk. We live in peace, secure in the knowledge that we are free from aggression and war. Now, we do not pretend to have achieved perfection. But we do have a system. I came here to give you these facts. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. Join us and live in peace or pursue your present course and face obliteration. The decision rests Yours. with you. I feel like you should have said this as soon as you come out of the ship the first time. Got Moringa. Same to you, man. The end. What a phenomenal movie that was. More people need to watch this movie. That was when the Earth stood still. And now I understand why the Earth stood still. Because he turned the power and everything off for an hour or so. That was truly epic. I loved every moment of it. Carpenter, whoever the actor is that played him, he was amazing. His presence and his acting was so good. And the kid, I've got to give credit to the kid. The kid was amazing. And it's kind of a shame we didn't get to see more of the kid towards the end. Hope I was hoping he would get on the ship and they would bond a little bit further. Or that would lead to something. But it didn't in the end, which was unfortunate. That was the only thing I would say about the film. I would have liked to see more. I loved Mrs. Benson, was it? Uh, wow. <laughs> Smoking hot lady. And screw her salesman boyfriend. Got him killed in the end. And it's kind of a shame as well, Carpenter maybe doesn't live, maybe he gets back to his home planet then dies because that thing to regenerate him doesn't last that long. So it was enough to give that final speech, which was truly powerful and it is now in the human's hands. What do they decide? Do they decide to destroy themselves or live in peace and the rest of the galaxy and universe is safe to carry on like it is? The other thing I will say is maybe it would have saved a lot of time and effort if he just said that whole speech as soon as he got off the ship. Maybe that would have helped his cause a bit better and took the helmet off straight away. I did say in the, in the beginning, I was like, why is everyone pointing these guns at him? Someone just pulls the trigger by accident, you know, the, in a nervous situation and then, he, you know, they've shot him. And you don't know how he's going to react. He could be super aggressive and annihilate them all. And the guy got shot, luckily, in the arm, so he was okay. But then the robot also, luckily, just took out all the weapons. He could have just annihilated them all, like, at, towards the end. He was going to until Miss Bennett deactivated him with that code. Took her onto the ship and pressed some buttons. So I don't know what happened there. But I just truly enjoyed it. And the chemistry between the characters. I liked Carpet. I liked Bennett. I liked the kid. Kind of wish we got more, to be honest. Just of that. Of him, like, with the scientist and writing on the chalkboard. That is a way to introduce yourself. Correcting his equation and helping him out and like, I wish we got to see maybe he builds him a super cool train set for the kid and and the kid finally gets to go on the ship that that would have been stuff I would have loved to explore but obviously I get that's not the whole point of the movie for that message at the end and that was truly incredible I loved how he showed his powers like he was going to threaten to flatten New York just as a show of power but instead they decided to uh, cut all the power and electricity and everything just make the world stand still which it did and i liked how the scientist was like are you frightened 
does it frighten you? And she's like, yes, yes, it does. And I was like, oh, good, good. It's sending a good message. So good. Before I forget, the score was great. I loved that in the quiet moments. It brought so much tension and atmosphere to the movie. And this movie came out in the 50s. The effects were amazing. Apart from that one little bit of wires, you can see when the robot picks her up. Yeah, it was so good. I don't want to know how that robot thing walked like that man inside the suit was there little holes he could see out of but overall a phenomenal film tell me what you thought in the comments below i love to hear what you guys say educate me about the movie i love reading please let me know in the comments below and i'll catch you guys in my next video